oh, you trying to sever her line from her bestie? Nah, she not doing that. She killing the dog, she killing the neighbor, she killing all of y'all, all right? Let's go! What's up, Geek Gang? This is Lainey from Geek by Heart, here to talk about the latest horror movies of this year. Yo, if you like what we're talking about, hit that subscribe button and hit notifications so you can see our latest drops. And now, for the good, the bad, and the ugly of Megan. Let's go. All right, y'all, there was a lot to like about this movie. First, I really think that it was a solid PG-13 slasher, okay? Like, listen, I'm an adult, so I love my slashers or any horror movies to be rated R, but if you're gonna be PG-13, don't bore me to death, don't be gimmicky, don't be cliche, and I feel like they didn't do that. So for a PG-13 slasher, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it its props. Next up, I think that they did a really good job nailing that strange family dynamic. I mean, it was kind of weird actually to see like a niece and a aunt, especially me being an aunt myself, and it feels like they really were estranged. Like you felt that tension, you felt that weirdness, you felt that unfamiliarity, okay? And I feel like that that was accredited to the actors, okay, of like Violet McGraw and Allison Williams, the girl you know from Get Out, and I still got issues with her, but that's another video for another time. Um, but yeah, I really do feel like they nailed that family dynamic and it worked really, really well into showing and telling about each of their griefs, but specifically with Katie, because that leads her into being so closely or besties with Megan. All right, another thing that I thought that was really good was that that's slow burn. I'm not a fan of slow burns. My husband can tell you all the time, like I'm the type of person I needed to, I need to start really well I needed to just keep on giving to me and so I get bored very easily but their slow burn was methodically thought out it starts with the fact that they introduced this family dynamic again between Gemma and Katie and it just goes into the fact on how Megan starts to be very possessive small things but then medium things and then all out oh you trying to sever her line from her bestie Nah, she not doing it. No! 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 She killing you. She killing you good, okay? She killing the dog, she killing the neighbor, she killing all of y'all, all right? So that slow burn really does pay off towards the middle and definitely to the end, and I appreciate that. And last but not least, another great thing about this movie, it was written by a blurred queen herself, Akila Cooper. You might know Kayla for the upcoming The Nun 2. She screen wrote that. She screen wrote this. She screen wrote malign Malignant. <laughs> malignant, all right? She also screen wrote, I believe, American Horror Story, some of those seasons as well, and Grimm, and The 100. She has a lot of writing credits to her name, so look her up. She is very interesting. All right, so there wasn't the greatest thing in the world. There are some bad parts about it. First up, I feel like the kill count should have been higher. Okay, um, you, it's cool that you had lackeys that actually made it to the end of the film. Like, Gemma had two people that were her assistants, Tess and Cole. They were primed for killing. And matter of fact, you thought that they might have died and then they turn up alive. Okay, that, could have made their kill count even higher. So for me, I love a high kill count. I need that to happen. I like the fact that their kill count made sense, but again, it could have been higher. And those two, Tess and Cole, they were destined to die. So I feel like James Wan is known for like really good horror movies and some decent twists. There was no big twist here, okay? And I felt like they set it up that it could have been. In the beginning of the film, Gemma was working or had worked on her college project, which was a huge ass robot named Bruce. And in the finale, there was like a part of that script that Megan is talking. She makes it feel or sound as if she personally, like her programming had already existed before. And I actually thought that they were going to be like, you know what? 
I, I was with you since college or something like that. I thought it was gonna go towards that AI in Bruce. And I was like, yo, that would have made it even more personal and understanding why this fucking robot psycho, but it didn't. And I thought that that was a major like opportunity that was missed and it could have actually given a little bit more depth, okay, and understanding to both their characters. So I felt like that was not the greatest thing and they should have done something about that. So I think lastly, in the beginning of the film, you get maybe like a good, anywhere between three and five minutes of Katie's parents. They kind of made them terrible. And I don't know why. Um, I, no, I get why. Because you're gonna kill them off. So like, if you want us not to feel for them, make them kind of terrible so that when they get killed off, it's like, eh, they were kind of terrible. I don't care if they get killed. But I felt like that, that would have helped us more even buy into Katie as a character if her family was loving. You know what I'm saying? Like, it kind of played into, I guess, maybe they were terrible and, and Gemma's a workaholic, so that, you know, family dynamic that I was talking about, that was the strength of this movie about Katie and Gemma being very estranged. But like, I really do think, at least for me as an audience member, I would have been captivated even with Ka um, Katie even more, like if she came from a loving family. And because we kind of got robbed of that, I was just like, I, that sucks. But it, it, it made me slower to like her, okay? If that makes sense. I hope it does, because to me it was bad. I, am the one, the way you're trying to I think the ugly for me in any horror film is how it affects our reality or how it could be perceived affecting our reality. So, bonkers fucking AI, okay, developing. First off, Gemma had a smart home, all right? Me personally, no. Okay, no. So the fact that her smart home could have been taken over by Megan, that's cool or an interesting premise for a sequel, but reality, <laughs> how? What the? F oh my God, that shit is scary. Gemma would never leave, done. Okay, carbon monoxide in her sleep, killed. That might kill Katie. If Megan doesn't care anymore, it don't matter. And then she goes off to anywhere else. It's kind of like Skynet. Just gonna be everywhere. The fuck? The fuck. I don't wanna live in a world where we have crazy AI. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And that verdict, hmm, I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's a decent movie. Go see it, go see it. Okay, January is not known for its horror movies, but maybe our luck is changing. I mean, you had Scream of last year, and now you have Megan of this year. So who knows? Maybe next year, January might be another horror icon coming up. But we will have to wait and see, all right? This is Lenny, I'm from Geek By Heart. If you like what you see, comment below what you think the sequel is going to be like. Did you like the movie you saw it? Did you not like the movie you saw it? Let me know, comment below. Hit that subscribe button and catch us on our next video. We will see you, see you, see you, peace. Yes.